Elementor AI has come a long way in just half a year. From its humble beginnings with just text and CSS generation to now generating images and manipulating them afterwards like in Photoshop and even container generation based on a prompt. So then the question arises, is Elementor AI good enough to implement in our workflow as web designers who work for clients? I mean, I don't want to have more monthly costs in my life, so this $3 a month, on top of the subscription we are already paying for Elementor Pro, should really make my life easier, otherwise I'm not gonna do it. So let's take a look at some real life examples to find out if it's worth it. So let's start with what kicked it all off, text and CSS generation. Initially, I saw these as nice to have, but not really essential because we can already use ChatGPT for free in order to generate text and some simple code. But I've heard from Elementor that this one is a little bit smarter because it should understand your website. I am here on a website that is all about scooters. I'm gonna click on edit with AI, but then you have to put in a prompt so you can delete this and then type something. But what do you type? They have a few suggestions here, but these are only five and that's often not enough. And they know that people struggle with creating prompts, so they made a website called prompts.elementor.com on a subdomain. And here you can see examples. So if you go to text and you scroll down, then it will tell you what you need to put in the AI in order to get a good result. I need a description right now, so I think that this one could be helpful. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna go to my website and I'm gonna put it in over here. Okay, so I changed it, make a description for a scooter renting and sharing website that contains one paragraph. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, and before we use it, let's do some quality control. Our scooter renting and sharing website provides an easy and convenient way for customers to rent and share electric scooters. Well, that's actually pretty much what we need. This text is way too long and they have some options over here. This is where I think it's better than ChatGPT. ChatGPT doesn't have these options. I think they should also add these buttons because these are common things that you need often. You need to make it longer or shorter. So let's make it shorter because we just need a lot shorter. Oh, did I click on make it longer? <laughs> I did. Okay, we need to make it even shorter. And there we go. Uh, let's use that text. Perfect. This is, this is great. So generating text is pretty cool, but another one that I like is improving text. Sometimes you get a text from your client or you come up with something yourself and you're like, hmm, this is a little bit boring. For example, over here, this is a feature section, but this title says our vehicles are electric. I mean, that's a little bit boring, let's be honest. So let's see if we can improve that with AI. And here you can see that it's not perfect. It gives you a way too long text because this text was super short. It made it super long. And here you cannot easily chat with the GPT and say like, hey, this was wrong. I want something else. You have to use these buttons or just put in something else. So let's click a few times on make it shorter. Okay, so now it says go green with electric cars. It changed it into cars, not scooters, but at least it gives you some ideas on what you can use. And this is better. I think they should improve this a little bit more, but for big blocks of text is definitely nice. Okay, enough about text, let's jump to CSS. I have my doubts about this. I mean, Elementor is all about doing things visual without using code, because why would you use code if you can do it inside of Elementor without using code? But there are many things which are not possible with Elementor, but only with code. So for example, this one, you hover and the icon and the text animates. So let's test it. I'm gonna copy this prompt right here. That's their example. I'm gonna go to a button that actually has an icon. Then we're gonna go to advanced. We're gonna go to CSS, click on the AI button and I'm gonna add the prompt and then it does give me a code. Okay, so they have an insert. You don't have to copy and paste, which is nice. So now it should work, I guess. Oh, it does something. Well, it's pretty cool, but it doesn't rotate the icon as it said, but it did animate the text. I actually like this effect. Um, it's not perfect, but I am pretty excited about this, to be honest. <laughs> it's already pretty cool. Let's go to another one because now I want to see more. The button grows and the text moves on hover. That is also really cool. I'm going to copy that prompt. Let's see if we have more luck with this one. All right, I'm going to insert it again and let's see. Uh, no, it doesn't work for me. What am I doing wrong? I have no idea. By the way, all of my buttons already have that animation going from left to right, as you can see right here. So this one 
didn't work for me, unfortunately. If you guys know what I'm doing wrong, then please let me know, but I'm just copy and pasting their examples. The previous one worked a little bit better. This one I'm interested in, it is an animating background with gradients. That would be so cool, because on my homepage at the top, I have used these blur backgrounds. So let's try this. I'm very curious as to if this is gonna work. I guess I just should go to the container and then to background. And then uh, let's edit with AI, put it in and generate the code and click on insert. Oh, oh, it actually does work. Wow, this is cool. Let's change the colors. Okay, I'm gonna copy some of the colors and replace them with the codes over here. Oh, and it updates live because it's CSS. That's also really nice. Let's change this color as well. Wow, this is starting to become sick, guys. <laughs> it's way too intense. You know what? I will leave the last color. It's already super cool. If you can make it a little bit less intense, this makes me excited because this means that anyone can now create a cool library on their website with a lot of custom code things, which we can simply add to Elementor. I think Elementor should just make this page a lot longer, make it easy to find things so we can easily change the things on our websites that we couldn't before. So the more I discover this, the more I get excited about custom CSS. Let's move on. But this was already really cool. Now into image generation. This feature is stepping into the territory of Photoshop, but with the convenience of having it right into your builder. I'm a big fan of Photoshop. I have been using Photoshop for years, but not everybody that uses Elementor has Photoshop and is paying for Adobe because Adobe is actually really expensive uh, compared to this AI. But Photoshop AI is really good. So let's check if this is actually good with starting with something simple, expanding. Back in the day, I used Photoshop a lot to make images bigger. For example, over here, if I want this uh, picture to be taller, I just basically went to Photoshop and then made the image bigger like this. Back in the day, I would use the clone tool and then try to extend it. But now in Photoshop, you have generative expand. If you simply click that and click generate, then it will flawlessly give you more sky. Let's see what Elementor can do. I'm gonna click on edit with AI, expand the image. We unfortunately only have a few preset uh, aspect ratios which is a bit limiting. I would love to have a custom one over here because not every picture is gonna be one of these. So let's see what happens if I actually say, I need more sky at the top of this image. They have this button over here to enhance my prompt. So Elementor will understand it better. And then they will say, extend the top of the image with a gradient that goes from light shade to blue to the bottom, dark shadow towards the top. This is Elementor's suggestion. Let's see what it generates. And it didn't do anything. I'm not so sure what's happening here. Let's try to do another aspect ratio to see what's happening now. Generate. Okay, it is generating four images. This is not great. I don't know what I did wrong. I just clicked on enhance the thing. I'm just gonna change the text over here with more sky. That should be easy. Let's try again. Okay, what am I doing wrong, guys? I have no idea. I think it has something to do with the aspect ratio. I don't know, but for this one, for now, I would still go back to Photoshop, but I'm probably doing something wrong. Let's try the other feature, which is variation. We have an image here at the top, which is our houses. But let's say that we want the style of the houses to be a bit different. This is a little bit too American. Let's say I want to have European houses. Make them more European. Let's see what it comes up with. Hmm. Interesting. This one is more European, definitely. Uh, it's the most realistic one. These are still very American style. Let's use this image and see how it looks. Yeah, that is definitely cool. It's a little bit unsharp. I don't know why, but we also have a solution for that, which is resize. Yes, they also have a way to make it a lot sharper. So let's just put it on the max. 
This is, by the way, something that is very common. You get images from your clients, but they took some images on their old Android phone and it doesn't look that good. And then they say, put it big on the website. And you're like, wait, this image is not sharp enough, right? With this feature, you can simply make it sharper. Uh, use the image and there you go. It actually is sharper. I don't know if you can see it on the video. I do have to say though, it's not perfect. Like the way this roof is going over here and this car, I don't know what happened to this car. <laughs> and I don't know what, what this sign in the middle of this road is about, but it is definitely sharper and it is more European than it was American. I mean, generative AI is improving and I'm pretty sure that it will improve within Elementor AI as well. Uh, would I use this right now? Well, no, because my client could say like these houses look a little bit weird, right? But it will be a matter of time before it's as good as Photoshop is right now. Uh, even Photoshop makes mistakes. Let's say that I have this picture and I want to cut myself out. Actually, that's exactly what I did on the Living With Pixels website. I cut myself out. So let's see if Elementor can also do this. Remove the background. We only have one button. Let's see. That is actually pretty impressive. It made a mistake in my neck over here uh, because there's a chair, but my hair is pretty good. Here on the right, it's not perfect, but this is really good actually. Can we edit it? Because I have a mistake in my neck. What can I do? I don't know what I can do. I need to edit some things. So yeah, it definitely worked, but it's not perfect. And I don't want this mistake in my neck. So I still have to get back to Photoshop. So then the question is, can I export this? Because I want to use Elementor's work and then get it into another tool like Photoshop or Canva. And yes, it did add it to the media library. So we can save this image if we want. Uh, and then drag it into another tool. That is of course not a perfect workflow, so maybe Elementor can add a feature where you can adjust it a little bit. For now, uh, let's move on. And then finally, there is container generation with AI. This one is still in beta, but I am very impressed that they are so fast. You remember the first video that I made about Elementor AI, where I said the moment we can just generate a whole website with a prompt, well, that's maybe the moment where some people that are not very skilled in Elementor should worry, because if clients can do this, then why would they pay you, right? They're now already here with a feature that is promising to do that. It's still in beta, so it is rough, but look at this, they're saying, if you put in a prompt like this, hero section with image, it will pump out three container layouts. I have already done multiple tests, and to be honest, the idea is better than the execution so far. Here you can see that I try to recreate some of my designs from a Figma design. I try to be really specific with my prompts and really describe what I saw on the Figma, but the results were still disappointing. Elementor here is not really understanding what I want yet. And I feel like it's just some templates running in the background, which they then fill with images and text, which is what many AI website builders do. Instead of really trying to understand what kind of container design you want and then giving you some options. So I didn't found this one to be useful yet. So this truly needs some work before it becomes useful. But the promise for this feature is massive because it basically combines everything you need, images, text, and container layouts. I wanna do one test together with you guys because this one looks pretty good. Let's just try this one. I'm gonna copy this text. Let's just put in exactly that prompt like that and generate. By the way, this took like five to 10 seconds and it does give me these three layouts. This right one doesn't look like a hero section at all. And it clearly said in my text about marketing agency, but these results say wooden accessories or here in one, all in one solution to consultation, health and fitness. <laughs> That's completely different. Let's try this one. Maybe this one is better. Maybe there's a hidden title somewhere. Oh yes, there is. Okay, I'm gonna try to change the background. 
Uh, that's also a thing, by the way. They put white text on white text in these uh, AI-generated containers. So, okay, here we can see a text that is actually about a marketing ad, you see? So with this one, they did actually provide something. So if you're like me and you like to design your websites first in a design tool like Figma, before you go into Elementor, then it's probably more work to use this tool and to convert it back to your design uh, than to start from the beginning. This, of course, requires you to understand things like the container and the site settings, which then leads me to the point of thinking that this tool is maybe better for beginners, but not for somebody who actually knows what they're doing. The rest of the tools with Elementor AI, like text generation and image manipulation, that's kind of useful because sometimes you get things from clients and you wanna change that. And even if you are a beginner, then I question if it's really that useful because creating prompts, it's not that easy. It requires your brain to work quite hard because let's say that you have a layout like this and you want to transform that. How do you describe this, right? The whole benefit of being a designer with no-go tools is that you can keep everything visual in Figma and in Elementor. You don't have to think about how things work technically. So how do you describe this? Uh, a section with a uh, one container on the top with a heading and a text and then two rows of three columns. It's quite hard for your mind to actually type the prompt. So even for beginners, then I'm like, wait, is it not just easier to just go into the template blocks over here and then just go over here to, for example, benefits? And it'd be like, oh, okay, this already looks a lot more uh, what I'm trying to do and then work from here. This literally took me two, three seconds and I have something that looks similar. AI would probably also generate something that looks like this because you still have to change all the colors in the typography. So in general, I am not convinced yet that container AI is gonna be useful, perhaps in the future for whole pages. The same thing with Reloom. If you saw my video with Reloom, you can describe a whole page and it will give you ideas for sections and it will generate wireframes, but it's just wireframes. After that, the styling begins, but here they kind of cut out that part and they just make you focus on one container. And I'm not sure if that workflow is actually gonna be nice for people, even though the fact that this is possible is amazing, but not everything that is possible should be developed, right? <laughs> so I don't know, maybe in the future will be better when we can generate whole pages and if it can give you ideas, maybe even connect it to the site settings. That will be even more amazing that before you create a prompt, you can say like, okay, for the body text, use this global font for the colors, use this, then it will actually start saving time. But right now, I'm not so sure. Let's talk about pricing for a little bit. They do have the $3 one. By the way, my website is in euros, but in dollars, it's the same. There are two packages. The first one I think is all you need because it already has 18,000 credits. But what is a credit? Here it says, Image prompt, 33 credits, container prompt, 40 credits. So 18K is quite a bit. You can easily make a whole website with that. But if you manage a lot of websites and you use AI a lot, then you will probably need to upgrade to this one. But then you are using it a lot and probably saving time and money with it. But for most people, the $3 package is absolutely fine. So is Elementor AI a must have? I don't think so right now especially not when you already have ChatGPT, maybe the paid version and Adobe Photoshop. But to be honest, those are also a lot more expensive. It's more like a nice to have at this point. Not all the features are great, but sometimes it's helpful and it will save you some time. $3 a month for adding a little bit of convenience to your life isn't that bad of a deal, especially not when your agency is already making a few thousand or a few hundred per month. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree with me? I hope you liked this video and I hopefully will see you in the next one.